our bye week uh, after the win against North Texas, and uh, we were able to, to do as we planned. We had good practices on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Uh, guys gave, got a little time off Friday and Saturday, and then we came back and actually had a full practice uh, Sunday evening, and everybody came back on time, did what they were supposed to do, so it was a very productive week and weekend. I think uh, I think our coaching staff and our, our players needed uh, a little time to freshen up and to uh, lighten up the load on their bodies a little bit, and I think we came back we came back pretty well refreshed and had a good practice last night. Mississippi State UAB game Saturday. Did you get a good chance to watch that game? I watched most of that game. Uh, certainly we've done uh, film studies since then. I thought uh, obviously UAB played very strong. Led, led for much of the game. Uh, you know, Mississippi State uh, began to run the ball and kind of looked like they got to them late, but I thought UAB played very well. Uh, shows the kind of team. If, if you look at what UAB's done so far, Mississippi State, Troy, those are good indicators of a team that's really close to being able to win but just had not been able to finish it. Talk about UAB's record, obviously, you know, no wins yet, but can that kind of be deceiving? Well, we'd like to think that records can be deceiving because we're sitting at two and three. And uh, so anytime you talk about it another another team, I think we have to look in the mirror and say, you know, how do we feel about ourselves? Uh, we don't have a winning record, and uh, so it's uh, probably wise to view UAB as a very dangerous opponent. And certainly if you look at film, you'll see that they do a good job of uh, – you know, making it really tough on the teams they play. In conference, you will say scheduling. This is a team your your program hasn't seen since 2008. Is it almost like a new team to many of the players on the team, even though they are a league member? It will be. there. I think it's only the seniors that have played UAB uh, because in the rotation, as you mentioned, Eric, you know, as the, the teams from the east rotate in and out, it has been two seasons that we haven't seen them. Uh, and, you know, UAB is not one that, that uh, you know, we've seen a lot even in our playing our other opponents on video. So it's not a real familiar uh, team for us. And so the, the study is really important this week to, to get back on track. One thing that jumps out is their experience on the offensive yeah. line and their special teams are pretty darn good. Special teams are very good. Uh, you know, it seems like in talking to Coach Downing, our special teams coordinator, we've played – in the first five weeks, five games, and then now another one, some of the best punters in the country in terms of being able to put the ball in a great location and keep it away from the returners. Uh, they've had good success in their return game as well. Uh, they are a veteran offensive team, uh, at least up front, and I think they've, they've really done a pretty good job. They're, they've been dangerous on offense. Now, they haven't generated as many points as they have, if you kind of look at it comparatively with the yards and the big plays they've had, uh, they they really a pretty productive offense. Is Pat Shad a pretty good weapon for him? He, which number is he? Uh, two, I think. Two, yeah. Yeah, he's really good. Yeah, he really is. I, I'm i at the point, it's still Monday, and, and numbers are a lot more, you know, I haven't quite locked into the name <laughs> yet, so I will as it, as it goes on. Do they have some urgency? I mean, they, they're basically, it looks like they're playing for their coach's job. I, I can't speak for how they're approaching it. I know that they are they played with great passion and intensity against Mississippi State. And, uh, you know, I would like to, I would hope that they wouldn't play that well against us, but I think they will. I think they're, I think they're at a point in their season where they're desperate to get a win and, and I think they're going to continue to battle and if there's one thing that you've seen from them in the five games you haven't seen them fold up the tent and uh, I think that says a lot for what Coach Callaway's done with them. Coach you talked about the resiliency of your team the loss of Demaris you know GJ got injured the passing of George uh, the tough schedule I mean they've been dealt a lot I, I'm very proud of our team and, and the way they have battled through uh, adversity for the season. I, I think we always, uh, those of us that have been in the game for a while, I mean, you know that you're never going to have a season absent of adversity. 
and uh, some some seasons you have a little more than others, and this is one of those we've had a lot. But uh, I love the way this team has responded. I think they've shown a lot of um, mental toughness and even in times physical toughness to, to overcome many of the issues that we've had to face. Um, you know, with that being said, I, I just like where we are. I like this group. I like the, their mindset right now, and I think they're hungry to make this run through conference play. It seemed like something like that would have to bring a group of guys together. Well, anytime you, you deal with adversity, that's, you know, one of two things happen. It either fractures you or it does bring you together and bond you. And I think that our guys really have done a good job of, of you know, tightening the ranks, uh, you know, locking arms. And, and, you know, everything I've seen has been a group that, that just wants to, to tighten up and get stronger. Does that pay off in late November? There's no question. I mean, that's... You know, as I said, Shaq, it's going to go one way or the other. And, you know, if you pull together, you get stronger. If you fracture, then you get weaker. And, and uh, I think it's going to pay off for us. I think the fact that we've seen some really good teams that we've had to play at a higher level uh, will do nothing but help us as we go down the road. We're almost to the midway point of the season. Uh, Conference USA, and we talked about this a little last week, is it kind of evolving like you thought it would with the competition among the 12 schools? Um, you know, I think it's, it's playing out to be a little stronger than what I had anticipated. Uh, I don't know that, that I was ready to see that, uh, you know, on any given week that how many of our teams have had big wins. I mean, for Rice to beat Purdue early in the season, for Marshall to beat Louisville, for uh, Southern Miss to just completely dominate uh, Navy like they did, um, Houston over UCLA. I mean, you go down that list, there's a lot of big wins in Conference USA, SMU over TCU. And uh, there's not going to be any gimmies down the road here. And if, and again, I go back to UAB. UAB doesn't have a, a notch in their belt, but they have played extremely well against some good, good football teams. You look at the West Division, too. Houston really played East Carolina tough this week. SMU's had a good win. This division alone is coming up pretty strong, isn't it? Well, I think so, and, uh, you know, that's all to be seen as we play this out, but uh, there's no cupcakes on the schedule. I mean, they, they've proven that. Uh, again, the, each of these guys have gone in and, and had some, I think, some marquee wins. Uh, UTEP is a tough place to go play. We've known that for a long time, and they took Houston, who has been very solid all the way through the season, right to the wire before Houston got that win. So... Uh, you know, as we look through the last seven uh, seven weeks uh, of the season, it's going to be an exciting run for us. And you talked about um, getting fresher. Um, some of the injuries that uh, in any case that you could speak about specifically. Uh, no, most of what we've been dealing with have not been. In fact, none of what we've been dealing with are season-ending type injuries, and so uh, most of them are the, you know, the sore hamstrings, the uh, concussions, the you know shoulders, those kind of things, and the fact that we were able to go a week and not, not have any hitting uh, really, I think, gives our guys a lot of rehab and recovery time. Uh, we had more guys at practice uh, last night than we've had, you know, fresh for at least two or three weeks. So, uh, you know, I think we've got to have a good week and we've got to work through it. And, and there have been times, as we did in the North Texas week, that we actually lost guys from practice on Thursday you know, to non-contact injury. So those things happen, but going into this week, we're at a pretty good place, uh, maybe, you know, as close as we've been to being full strength for a while. You get some, a lot of the guys in the receiving core that uh, missed that last game? Uh, some of them are back, some of them haven't practiced yet, but again, with us practicing on Sunday, you don't have the luxury of having as much of the uh, they'll, they'll, a lot of them will have their medical checkups and all that stuff on Monday, and then if they're cleared to go, they'll be stable to start on Tuesday. How did GJ practice over the week? Did he do Very well. Did he get a little, little well. rest then? He did, but uh, he told me yesterday it's the best he's felt. So he, he felt really good and practiced at a very high level yesterday. Your football program, you've been a part of this football program for five years. Uh, Tulsa's playing its 50th Conference USA regular season game this Saturday. Just talk about where this program has, how this program has left its mark in this league over that time span. 
Well, it's kind of interesting, I think, that as you look at the kind of the wave that, that uh, 